Okay, th thank you, Gael. Um, and thank you for, for everyone for, for coming. It's uh, great to, to be in Grenoble. Um, I was here in November, and um, it rained all weekend when I was here. I did not see any mountains, um, so it's nice to be here when, when it's actually, it's, I don't think it's sunny out, but um, at least you can get, don't get wet. Um, so w what I want to do is, is, is talk a bit about um, why I think IoT really needs to have open source um, as one of the driving factors for, for really driving I the, the innovation um, I in the industry. Um, I've been working at the Eclipse Foundation for, for over nine years and have seen kind of what open source can do to, to really you know, help create an industry and, and drive forward some, some creativity and, and innovation. And I think right now the IoT industry is missing, missing a lot. Um, so I want to start the, the, the conversation with hopefully not too controversial of a statement. Um, for some people it might be, but um, and I would stipulate that if really openness wins. Um, if, if you have technology that's closed and proprietary versus something that's, that's open um, based on open standards and open source, the open standards and open source is going gonna, is gonna to win in, in the end. And especially if it's a technology that you're looking to get broadly adopted. Um, if you some want something that is, is being used by, by an entire industry, um, then open, open is going to win. And, and really, in kind of today's technology industry, it's, it's the transactional cost of proprietary technology just takes too long. That you can't really get a lot of people up and going and, and using it if you've got to go through a procurement step um, for, for people to adopt your technology. So, and, and so I think that's, that's kind of the, the hypothesis that I want to start with. Um, and, and there's many examples for this in, in the industry. Um, and if you, when we talk about the, the Internet of Things, I think it's important to look at our history. And how many people would believe if, if when Tim Berners-Lee came out with a lot of his ideas for the World Wide Web that he decided to go and form a, a Silicon Valley startup, move to Silicon Valley, get some venture capital, create a company, and start trying to profit from a lot of his inventions around the World Wide Web. Would we have the internet today if, if there was a company trying to profit from it? Um, I would say no, right? So, so right now, when, so back, back when he had a lot of these ideas, there were actually some really good proprietary solutions out there for online communities, like CompuServe in, in a AOL. Um, but with the, the, the openness um, the, of it kind of how he, t the approach that he took, right, was basically he wanted an open standard. And then what happened was there's open source implementations um, of it. So the internet today is actually based on open standards and open source implementations through things like the, the Apache web server, Linux, um, W3C standards, right? So, so there's lots of, lots of good history that, that we can learn from. Um, beyond that, there, there's things like if you kind of more from a developer focus, if you look at the web services versus REST, right, where you got a very simple, um, uh, elegant solution in REST that really just won the day. So simplicity, too, is also very important in terms of getting, getting um, broad s adoption. Um, I think in the mobile industry, you're seeing s something similar. Um, there's certain exceptions, and, and I think Apple is been very successful and will continue to be very successful. But if you look at who's, what's the dominant platform in the mobile industry, um, I, saw, I was at a, an event yesterday where someone put up a chart where basically when Android came on and the number of a a Android handsets is just skyrocketed a, a, on top of, uh, of Apple. Right, so Android is definitely becoming a more open, Android is the open platform. Um, some people might debate whether it's really open source development, but it's definitely open source. It's being used by many, many different players in, in, in the industry, um, and it's becoming the, the, the dominant uh, platform. So again, I think Apple will continue to be a very profitable, very successful company um, in, in the industry, but the open platform is, is going to be the dominant platform. And, and so let's ask, step back and say, okay, why does this work? Why is opening, openness um, kind of winning? And I think another trend that, that is happening in the, in the market is the, the rise in the importance of developers. Um, and there's a book that came out um, 
probably 18 months ago about the, called the New Kingmakers. Um, and and the, the, the idea is, is that procurement and how technology gets adopted has been flipped, flipped around. Um, where it used to be a very top-down, the, the, the senior peoples were, were making decisions on procurement and on what technology to adopt. It was a top-down process that now developers are actually becoming very influential in making technology decisions. They're out there looking for new, new technology, learning new technology, and bringing it into organizations um, that are, uh, and bringing it into the organizations, and, and the organizations are starting to adopt based on these recommendations from developers. So the, de the influence of developers in new technology decision is becoming incredibly important. And this is a new trend probably in the last five to, five to ten years that I think has really impacted the, the, the industry. And so, why, so wh why, is this, why are developers important? Well, what happens is, is that developers actually build real, really cool stuff. And I think the mobile industry is, is a perfect example. If you look at the app stores, right, there's, there's just a huge breadth of technology and, and different applications being developed um, by developers that are they're out there doing some interesting things. Um, and so what happens is the developers will take a technology and use it in different ways that you never would have imagined. Um, they will also build value-add plugins, add-ons. Eclipse is a great example. The Eclipse community is a great example of, of developers building plugins that really add value to the, to, to the overall platform. They also do things like create tutorials. They create art, write articles. So they're adding value to, to the technology platform and creating this, this, this wide, wider eco ecosystem. And they do it, typically will do it for free, and typically will do it on, on their free time. Th they also tell other things, yeah, other people. They tell their colleagues. Developers often like to brag about the new technology that they use. They'll create a lot of passion about the new technology they use. And so it's a great marketing and, and great viral um, uh, mechanism to get the word out about, about your new technology. So there, if you get a good developer community on side to your technology platform, it, it definitely helps with, 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 with the adoption um, going forward. And, and, and so the, the question becomes, okay, well, how do, you, how do you win over the developers, right? How do you get developers to, 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 come, to come to your platform? And I think the, the answer is open wins. W the, the openness wins the developers. Um, we've, we've done a survey of the Eclipse community before where we'll ask, why do you use open source? Why are you involved in open source? And I think I forget the number, but I think it was close to 75 percent were using open source to learn new technology, right? To to keep their skills up to date, and so they're doing this on their free time, right? They're doing this in the evenings, so so they're looking for the easy solution. They're not going to go out and buy a proprietary SDK or a proprietary hardware platform. Um, they don't have the time. They don't have the money. So they want to to go out and, and keep their skills up to date, but they're doing it on their own time, and they're not going to spend a lot of money to, to, to be able to do it. So they're looking for the open solutions to, to, to be able to do that. So I would say that, that if you take a combination of open s standards and open source, that's how you start to attract developers. And that the developers now in the tech industry are a huge source of innovation um, that if you want technology to be adopted, if you want an industry to be created like the IoT industry, um, you really need to have the developers on site to drive forward that, that, that innovation. So where are we today in the IoT industry? Um, I would say we're pretty immature. Right? It's, it's very new um, <laughs> that there's, there's lots of learning to, to be done. Um, and really, there's not a huge developer community being developed. Um, around it. And, and so right now, it, it's really complicated. Um, and it's not that trivial to get an IoT solution deployed. 
out there. You have to kind of take it from all the way to the, 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 the device, the OEMs, to gain to the, the wires, the connectivity, to the back end, to the uh, kind of the enterprise applications. There's a lot of moving parts that need to be um, considered when you're building a solution like this. Um, and, and so what happens is, is that there's a lot of siloed solutions being built. Right? There's a lot of proprietary SDKs out there to solve a lot of the complexity. Right? So, so companies, either the hardware vendors or the, the enterprise vendors or the, the middleware vendors, are uh, solving the complexity by kind of creating this lock-in into, into their silo, which is usually vertically aligned to, to an industry solution. Um, and and so, so that's fine, but if you really want to get to the internet, of things, right? You need to have the interoperability. interoperability you need to have the, the cross pollinations uh, of these solutions, and and so where I think we need to get to is really an open ecosystem for for IoT. Um, and when I say open, I don't say I don't mean no profit, right? That you need to have profit in in an industry to be successful. Um, because profit is what actually gets reinvested. Trust me, I, uh, like all developers like to be paid, right? All developers, right? So, and even open source developers like to be paid. Um, and, and most open source developers are paid for, for, for their work. So profit is, is, is e very important. <laughs> but what I, th I do believe what we need to be working on is a core set of building blocks for, for IoT. Um, and, and so and I think um, my colleague Benjamin Cave will, will talk also in more and more detail, but um, what I think we need to be thinking about and working on is a core set of application frameworks and, and runtimes um, that people can use to build their IT solutions. We need to be implementing and looking at um, what are the protocols to, for, for IoT and, and standards that um, are going to be used, and where are the implementations, and what are the set of development tools that are required for for these develop for developers to build these solutions and to make it as, as easy as possible, and then around that we need a third party um, commercial ecosystem that are using these building blocks to build commercial s commercial syst um, solutions, um, and so I think that's the vision that we as a community need need, need to work on um, for it. And I think there's, there's three trends that I want to go through that why I think this is going to happen. Um, the first is my strong belief is that the developers are starting to get engage in, in this. And they are starting to engage with open solutions and, and open source solutions. In the last two to three years, the number of open source projects in this space has grown quite considerably. Um, and you can see, I think we're going to see today, which I it's great to see that, <coughs> that people are, are taking um, a lot of the open source projects and doing some really interesting things. Um, and that's, it, that's starting. So the developers are starting to gauge, this is really cool stuff. Um, so there, there's lots of things to learn, there's lots of things to innovate on, um, and so the developers are, are starting to engage. <coughs> The other trend I see that is, I think, having a huge impact in this industry is open hardware. So f five years ago, there's no way I could be up here talking about an open source project for IoT. <clears throat> because if you had an open source project for IoT, where are you going to run it, right? You're not going to run it on a Windows machine. That's not really kind of a thing, right? <laughs> um, you, the only solution was to go out and buy a uh, $1,000 piece of hardware, a board, right, and deploy it to that. Well, you can't have an open source project that is basically requires a piece of proprietary hardware. That co certainly that costs $1,000. You can't get anyone to use that, right? The, the barrier is ju just too high. So what I believe is, is that things like the Raspberry Pi or Arduino and Beagle board has been a, removed a huge barrier that um, like, like Raspberry Pi is not really open, um, but Arduino and BeagleBoard are, are certainly um, open hardware. But, but regardless, like, this is really ch freely like, cheap hardware. It's easily accessible hardware that has made it possible for open source projects to target these platforms, and, but more importantly, adopters and, and, and developers who want to experiment to, to use 
um, the, the software and to, to try it out and, and create things. And I think the other trend that we've seen with open hardware is um, the importance of people creating prototypes and proof of concepts starting with, with Arduinos and, and using Arduinos or, or a BeagleBone. And then when they want to go to deployment, going to the commercial grade hardware. Um, and so that's, again, it's all about innovation. And innovation starts with, with kind of d doing examples, doing kind of trying, seeing what's possible. And this makes it, ma makes it possible. So I think open hardware is incredibly important um, for, for getting to an o open ecosystem. And then the, I think the final thing is, is a trend that I think will drive the industry towards this open ecosystem is around big data. Um, if you look at companies like IBM, SAP, Oracle, um, even Cisco and Intel, um, their primary driver is they want to get a piece of the data, right? Like, it, it, like IBM and SAP, right? They want to populate their huge databases with even more data so they can do even more, sell even more analytics. Um, and, and so their motivation is how do we get even more data into our back ends? Um, and so they are very motivated to having a core set of standards that they support. If they have proprietary silos and SDKs that they have to go out and support to get data into their databases, that's just not going to scale for them. And these companies know how to do the standards. And you're seeing it more and more now that these companies are becoming more proactive in, term, in terms of the standards initiatives and in and, and, and open source. So I think big data um, is going to be, and the companies that are behind big data are really going to drive the industry towards You've, we've got to standardize on a, on a few things and a few building blocks. <clears throat> so, so that's kind of where I think the industry's going. Um, now, I'm, I'm not going to go into a lot of details, but I just because um, Benjamin is going to come up next and go into the details about what we're doing at, at Eclipse. But for for j just a, a brief introduction. Um, in November 2012, we introduced what was called the Eclipse M2M Working Group, um, but and we renamed it to the Eclipse IoT. Um, is really a community. We wanted to create a community for organizations, um, com commercial companies, research institutes, universities, who really believed in the vision of that you need to have a, an open community for and that's creating open source building blocks for for the industry. Um, and so we're focused on frameworks, protocols, and tooling um, for that. And I'm glad to say that in, last, in 2013, we've grown this community c quite substantially. Um, so unfortunately, th this, this chart did not come out very well, but um, let me just quickly explain it. So in terms of protocols, um, there's a number of standards out there that are being developed or have been developed um, and are going through a standardization process. And so Eclipse is not a standards organization. We have no aspirations to be a standards or organization. But we w what we want to be is the home for the open source implementations. Um, and quite frankly, if you have a, a, a standard that is a piece of paper, or m like most standards, many, many pieces of paper, um, if there's no implementation, right, then you don't really have a standard, right? You have a, a book, right? Um, so I really firmly believe that any standard needs to have an open source implementation if you want adoption for that. Um, I was just at an ITU event last um, yesterday in, in uh, Geneva. Um, and standards people, uh, some standards groups get this, but still there's some, some standards groups that are focused on creating the paper um, and, and the books. And, and so, what we want to do is, is be the home for, for these, these, these different standards. And so we've got a number of projects that are implementations of, of I think, what some of the key IoT standards. So MQTT is a, a publish subscribe um, standard that's um, going through the OASIS process. And PAHO is the Eclipse project that does the client implementation. And Mosquito is, is the, the server implementation. Another uh, uh, standard is called CoAP um, that's being done through IETF. And um, so CoAP is Constrained Application Protocol. 
Um, and we just have a new project called Californium that's coming into to Eclipse to, as a, a, a co-op implementation. The OMA has lightweight M2M, um, and uh, it's an Eclipse project called Wakama. Um, we like uh, Polynesian names, so um, so uh, that that's a, a project just that's coming into to Eclipse, and we're going to have a presentation from on um, there's a stand called One M2M that's. Basically, it's a consortium of, of the major telco stands organizations, global telco stands organizations, organizations that are come together and say we're going to have one standard um, called one M to M, um, and so an implementation of that is, is an Eclipse project. And Thierry and Maddie are going to be doing a presentation on that this, this afternoon. So that's from a protocols pr perspective. Then, on the pr frameworks perspective, we have a number of of different projects that um, we have at Eclipse. And I'm going to let, let Benjamin go through these, these in more detail. But the idea is, is um, you, you need to have some of the building blocks that people will build solutions on top of. And a lot of the, the typical architecture we're seeing with, with IoT solutions right now is that you have a, a gateway. The, all the sensors connect to the gateway, and the gateway connects to the internet. So a lot of the focus right now is, is on making it easy to build these, these gateways um, and, and the frameworks for building the gateways, um, and then um, build the solutions on top, on top of that. And, and Benjamin will get, get, go into a bit more detail uh, about that. Um, so I think we, we've come a long way in, in the last year, and I think in this year we're going to accelerate that. Um, c quite substantially. But to summarize, really what we're looking for is creating a set of building blocks in open source that companies can then take and build commercial solutions um, or open solutions, right? Um, and today we have lots of good examples of companies doing that, where they're taking um, not all their projects, but some of their projects at Eclipse and incorporating them into their commercial products. Um, and that's quite frankly, how the internet was created, and I think how the, it's the, the internet of things will, will continue to go forward, and, and um, will you get the, the growth in, in, in the innovation. So we were, as Gail was saying, this, this is a kind of a working group that, that we formed, um, and so far, so, so good. So I think, to, f to close up, um, we need to learn from our history. If you look at the internet of things today, um, we, we haven't learned, we're not learning from what we learned to, to how we create the internet. Um, that you need to have open standards, you need to have open source implementations of those standards, and that's how developers get engaged, is, is around those, those, those things. And if, you, and if you have developers on board, that's how you get the, get the innovation. So that's all I had to say. Um, as I said, Benjamin's gonna go into a lot more detail about, about the different projects, but do you have questions for me on on open source, some people still think open source can be a bit scary in terms of, especially from a commercial perspective. Um, I'd be happy to answer any of those questions or any questions just about in general about what we're trying to accomplish. Okay? Okay, you see, thank you.